Hi guys, today I wanted to make a lesson uh, about making your own chord melody arrangements. Um, if you're busy playing jazz, then uh, you probably need to work on this skill and uh, the ability to play chords and melody at the same time. Um, and uh, it's also something that uh, demands quite a lot, so this is maybe not really a beginner's lesson, it's really uh, more something where you need to know all the notes of the uh, of the neck. Uh, you need to know all the chords, and you need to know what notes are in the chords. So I'll leave it anyway be able to figure that out. Um, but on the other hand, if you're working on these skills, then uh, making a chord melody arrangement like this can be a very good exercise uh, to strengthen them, because you you really need to check out uh, different ways to uh, play the melody and different ways to uh, fit chords under the melody um, and that really helps you just learning more about what notes are in chords and where they are found on the neck so uh, so for that this is a good exercise um, for the rest uh, it's a given that if you're playing in a duo or in a trio um, then you might want to play the chords and the melody at the same time once in a while and not uh, just the melody um, so let's just look at that. I'm going to approach this fairly practical. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the, well, pr primarily the A part of uh, an old standard um, by uh, Ellington Strayhorn called Satendall, and then I'm going to harmonize that and look at a few ways to do that and uh, talk a little bit about how I uh, end up with the course that I end up with um, and uh, what I need to do and how I need to play the melody to uh, come up with uh, the right voicings and stuff like that. Uh, and also maybe talk a little bit about um, some choices so that you can uh, make the whole thing sound like a piece of music and that doesn't become completely abstract because you start adding chords. So the first thing is the melody. Uh, in this case, uh, since we're working on Sadendal, um, I've uh, written out the melody here, I'm just going to play it once just uh, to give an example of uh, one way of playing it. Um, when you uh, want to harmonize a melody it's useful to uh, put it on the top strings, uh, especially the two, f two top strings, because that way it's easy to fit a chord under it. I think it's going to be pretty clear when I start making the examples that if you, uh, if you have the melody uh, too low then, uh, then probably you don't know any chords or uh, the chord starts to sound a bit funny and um, and, I get, and it gets hard to play. So uh, when you're making this you probably need to change position a lot and you need to have a really good overview of uh, how you can play the melody uh, in several different uh, positions. Uh, okay, so the melody. So that's the first uh, eight bars of the melody. Um, when you play this, uh, you will have uh, two options in terms of uh, finding a chord. Um, one option is that uh, you play the note and you uh, immediately think like, well, okay, that's this chord. And you can sort of see a drop two voicing or a triad or something that's going to give you the chord sound that you want. Um, and then, uh, then that's fairly easy just to harmonize it like that. Um, another option is that you don't immediately see a chord, but you just need to construct one. Um, so maybe let's just talk about that, because I think I tend to think like that really a lot when I'm playing, um, or making the arrangements anyway. Um, if the melody, so you need to look at what the melody is related to the chord. Um, and then basically you need to have the melody and then you need to put the third and the seventh of the chord, or the third and the sixth, under it. Um, if you are playing a melody where the where the melody is already the third or it is the, the seventh, then uh, you actually only need to add one note, and then you have uh, complete harmonization. Uh, so uh, if you want to try that, you can play a song like uh, "All the Things You Are" or "I Should Care." Um, but in this case, um, the first note we have is an A. And um, we want to put a chord under the A, um, 
so D minor, we need the third and we need the seventh, so that's a C and an F. So we're going to end up with this. Which is an F major triad, in fact. Um, and when that moves to the G7, um, it's on our G note. So we just add the third and the seventh under that, and then we have that fixed. Um, and that flows fairly nicely, if not perfect, into one another. Um, I think maybe another thing that uh, I also should mention is that when I'm making um, an arrangement like this, um, I'm not really harmonizing too many notes. Um, I think I'm sort of aiming for just playing each chord once when it happens. Uh, so I'm not trying to harmonize every note, that would be some sort of a block chord arrangement. Um, because then you really need to know a little bit more about chords to, uh, to figure that out. And it's also technically a little bit hard to play. Uh, I'm also not too concerned with playing the bass. Um, because then we would have three layers. We would have the chords, the melody and the bass. So, com so it's not a complete solo arrangement in that uh, respect. I'm just uh, trying to add the chords so that you can use this if you're playing in a duo with a bass player or a trio or something similar. Um, okay, so in this process, so I'm just looking at, okay, we have the A on the D minor and we add 3rd and 7 under it. Uh, same idea with the G. And um, in this case, with this song, it's, it's uh, nice that uh, the first two bars are actually just repeated um, a whole step higher. So um, we can just use those chord too. Uh, and, uh, then we uh, get this melody, uh, and I moved that a bit because I wanted to play the seventh and the third of D7 under it here. So I played this, and then we get the D flat seven, so that will give us this arrangement. Like this, uh, one thing is that, like we have the melody on the first two top strings, the first two strings, so that's okay. Uh, but we don't have too much room to add any extensions. We can essentially just play the chord and not really anything else. Um, so the next thing we should look at is maybe to uh, move the melody all to the, all of it to the top string, because then we have a little bit more space to um, to work with some extensions. So. In this next example, um, I'm going to move the melody to the first string for the most part, and then I'm going to uh, use. Uh, well, actually, I think I'm pretty consistent, consistently using uh, drop two voicings uh, to harmonize it. Um, so that will be something like this. As you can see, when I'm playing this, uh, just to get this to make sense, one thing that ha happens really often when uh, when you start making chord melody arrangements is that you're too busy playing the chords and paying too little attention to the melody, uh, so it kind of drowns out and uh, you don't get it. Uh, you sort of lose the sense that you're actually playing a melody, and the arrangement becomes too important. Um, one thing that's really important when you practice this already is to take care that when you're playing that the melody. Uh, is the loudest. The chord uh, is just an embellishment. It's just um, icing on the cake. You don't really need to hear it that clearly. Uh, you really need to hear the melody. That's what's going to tie everything else together. Uh, and that's also the, the thing that you can really make a statement with. More than the chords, in my opinion, anyway. 
Um, so for that reason, I'm playing with my fingers very often when I'm doing these chord melody things, uh, because then it's easy to to accent the top note. Um, but it's just maybe uh, it's just it's also possible to do this with a pick. Um, but you do just you need to be aware of it, and you might need to practice it a bit and record yourself and listen to it, because it's very hard to hear if you're doing that um, without hearing a recording of yourself. Um, okay, so. Let's see, so now we have uh, the, the A part with uh, a few more extensions um, using the drop 2 voicings. Um, maybe just as an example, I'll uh, play the, the first two bars, which is in fact the first four bars because you would just move it up to uh, frets. Um, and then um, in a few different ways, uh, because um, it's... Uh, it's something that uh, you can really, you can really vary how you uh, choose to play something. Um, and maybe this melody is it's pretty much like a swing standard, so there are a few options that are not really uh, so handy, and it's also moving quite a lot, so you can't play two difficult chords. But um, but still, there are quite a few options. Let's see if we can come up with some. So um, the one we already did was this. just using triads. Um, we could play open triads on it also, that will give us this. Um, let's see, we could use a uh, stack of fourths, maybe. Is, it's very similar to uh, what we did with the drop two voicings because you end up with the same kind of kind of voicing for the G7. Um, I probably should do a lesson on uh, stacked fourth voicings at some point soon. When you start to focus on on what you can do within the chords, you can also uh, start to add small simple melodies uh, that move within the chords under the melody. Um, this is something that. You'll hear it a lot in uh, in uh, piano arrangements because it's uh, technically um, maybe it's probably technical technically quite difficult on piano, but it's uh, nothing compared to how difficult it uh, very quickly becomes on guitar. Um, but that would be something like this. So um, that's four ways to play this, uh, these two bars. Um, I think the main thing with this is uh, you need to sort of sit down first and uh, if you have a melody you want to harmonize, figure out what, uh, how to play the melody and uh, what notes uh, are in the melody compared to the chords. And then try and find, um, find a chord on the on the strong beats harmonically, so that would be the one or the three, um, and put down that chord, and then see if you can get that to sound um, like a like a complete melody. Um, then all this other stuff. Um, I've said that this is part one because I think I'm going to try and make more lessons about this. They're probably all going to be uh, more or less examples of. Uh, how how you can uh, do certain things with arrangements or uh, certain chord choices and stuff like that um, and not really sort of a complete method or, or a, a lot of theory on the subject um, because I think this is something where you yeah, if you don't understand the theory about, uh, behind this you need to go check that out and then try and use it when making stuff like this and understanding what I'm talking about here um, so, um, but just to be complete, uh, let's see if I can remember that. So here's the bridge of Sadendal. If 
if you have any comments, uh, then you can leave them here in the video, or you can connect with me on uh, Twitter or uh, Facebook or Google Plus or Instagram or whatever, um, and uh, ask me stuff there or comment on my lessons. Let me know if you have uh, suggestions for topics. Uh, and of course I hope that uh, you enjoyed the lesson and that you can use it uh, in your own playing. And if you like it, then uh, well, you can like it on uh, YouTube and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel to uh, stay up to date with uh, more lessons. Um, so, thank you for watching.